Hey. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Tell Mom podcast, episode 79. Hey, hey Holy sh- town. <laughs> Batman. Cute. Oh, my gosh. I'm excited about today's episode. Yes. I am Cullen. This is my sister, Brittany, and we are joined by two very special guests. If you don't know, you should. I mean, I, what? I, S-Town? Anybody? Anybody out there heard of that? <laughs> if not, then uh, what are you listening to? Um, it's Cheryl and then what was Crystal? Crystal, Crystal. Cheryl Dawson Cheryl, and Crystal. Cheryl and Crystal. And here. Cheryl, you are um, thankful. First, thank y'all so much for coming. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank thank you for you. having us. Yes, um, you are the our mayor's wife. That's correct. correct. That's correct. My, it, currently, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Like right. right. <laughs> it's like these acting right. <laughs> um, well, so you lived there your whole life. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, growing up, I probably about 10 miles south of there, West Blockton. But, okay. yeah, I went to high school there. And, uh, yeah, I've lived there my whole life. That's, you know, the you know moved away a few times, right. but always came back. Always came back. It's home. Mm-hmm. West Blockton, that's... That is, like, our backyard, yeah. essentially. Uh, it's just, it's, it's crazy. One of the first, uh, just to kind of, I'm going to let y'all give us a breakdown and background of everything, but one of the very first podcasts that I listened to two years ago was S Town. And if y'all haven't heard of it, it's got what it had like ten million downloads in the first four days, I it think. It did. And mm-hmm. I think it's up to ninety million now. Oh my god. Ninety gosh. million. Yeah, and, and my famous last words were nobody's gonna listen to this. <laughs> oh <my laughs> Don't god. take my numbers if you're betting. A little did oh you know. Yeah. I love it. So I was at a Christmas party with the family and they were all chattering chattering about the uh this new podcast out that was in uh, Woodstock, Woodstock. It's called S Town. Yeah, Go check it in out. Alabama. We're like, what? It's here from here. That automatically piques your interest. Yeah. Like somewhere that you live, and you're like, wait, they did a podcast about us. So, um, yeah, it, it, give us a, a, an overview. Um, if if you haven't heard it, I don't want to necessarily give any spoilers. No, I they're going mean, It's going to be spoilers. Yeah, I guess there needs I'm to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and just turn, yeah. the pod, turn this podcast off if you think you're not going to find out because I've got questions. Yeah, listen to it and then watch this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah we got to answer some, get some questions answered too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, give us a little overview of what S Town is all about and what does it stand for. Yeah. <laughs> oh well, that was a great thing. Um, I talked to um, Brian Reed for about four hours and mm-hmm. I kept questioning. Him. I'm like. Uh, why are you here? You know, yeah. and he would he would kind of dance around his answer. He would say, "Well, John sent me an email, and he said John B. McLemore lives in Shit Town, Alabama, and, and you know, and that got his attention. He came down here and did a story. So you know, I, I'm still not getting it all together. So when Brian leaves the house and I shut the door behind him, I was like, "What's it matter, Jeff? Nobody's gonna listen to it." And Jeff said. You just became the star of shit town. And I was oh, like, oh, God. my gosh. So I thought, whatever, you don't know what you're talking about. So sure enough, that was no, that was December. So sure enough, um, I was one of his last interviews. So in March, when they start doing the preview and the trailer and the logo, come, and it comes out, and it is S-Town, I have a heart attack. Oh, oh no. God. Jeff had, that was going to be called. No, Jeff had only been sworn in. In November, he just took office, and I thought, well, I've got you out of office quick enough. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know, I did a four-hour interview, and I thought, of course, you know, Brian didn't give us any um, idea of, of, of what was going to be in it. So I'm listening to the trailer like everybody else, so I'm thinking that I've participated in an expose on the town. <laughs> you know? oh, okay, yeah. You know, so I call because there's a guy that's a fact checker. And he had asked me certain things, so I call him back in a panic, and I say, hey, you can ruin my life, but you can't ruin other people's, you know, I won't participate in that. But he said, no, no, no. The funny thing is, the real criminals in town that I thought that John was trying to expose, he said, no, John liked them. (laughs) (laughs) So we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. so, so Brian is the narrator Mm -hmm. of S Town. Yeah. And John is or was one of the. Characters and you're, I He's guess, one of a character, right. quote unquote character. But this is all real life stuff. That's right. We're yeah. all real people. Yeah. yeah, and it's like I, I was referring to talking to somebody about. It. I was like, yeah, and the character Cheryl, and the, here you are. <laughs> but, so John was a guy that reached out to this podcast and mm-hmm. said there is a murder being covered up. Yeah. Yes, in yeah. S Town, uh, he thought there was a crime, um, and. Uh, 
What I tell people S-Town is, is it is small town gossip at its best mm-hmm. and its worst, okay? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't fault John for trying to wrong a right, you right. know, but John just, he didn't exactly have his facts straight. He so, didn't go about it the right way, did he? So, I mean, he's calling uh, someone to come investigate something that he didn't investigate himself. Uh. Right. <laughs> so, it was kind of a goose chase, but you can tell John got embarrassed too. So, yeah. And that's kind of the way life with John was. In our friendship, John was very impulsive, which I am too. So, I mean, that's right. why we were friends, but... Um, but yeah, that's what he would uh, run out there. He'd cuss you out. Many come back and apologize. You know, <laughs> so, so I think what surprised me with people was how it, they were. Um, he was endearing to them. You know, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so um, I thought when we were friends with him, I thought we were his only friends. Mm-hmm. And then you have all these people after the podcast that go. I love John. I wish I could talk to him, you know. Yeah. Right. And so he had no idea. He is he was just a fascinating character, oh, yeah. person. And just that, from what the little bit that we know, like you said earlier before we started rolling that you know, we saw the last of his life. That's not right. The, not all the yeah, rest of it. Yeah. So there's so much more to it. And I know from listening to the podcast and I only listened to it recently, um, that he that just the way that it was portrayed in Alabama, it was kind of embarrassing. Oh, it was bad. You know what I mean? It's, and so I can imagine yeah. from that, from your town, and this is where, you, and you're going, well, hang on. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, that's what Crystal, you saw Tuscaloosa News, didn't you? Right. Yeah. And, and Crystal calls me on the phone and goes, Cheryl, the John's done a story. And I'm like, I kind of know I'm in it, you know, and I'm like, oh, no. So, so yeah, when it it came out, the title alone was uh, devastating to us because I thought, you know, John, what have you done? Mm -hmm. Um, And then there were so many horrible things that John just was like, uh, shocking. You know, John's going to talk. Yeah. And you're just like, but people took some of the things he just mouthed as as fact you right. know yeah. right i think that's one of the interesting parts about the whole podcast was the the reason for the um reach out or the email mm-hmm. initially but then as it progresses you want to find out more out more about found out more about john mm-hmm. it, it yeah. kind of takes on the, its own story in itself so how do right. y'all what's your relationship how do you know yeah. Or, uh, <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> friend. They've gotten into some stuff before. I and I know he he was into clocks. Oh uh, yeah! And, and so that's how you met him, right? Antique clocks. That's right. With me, um, I was the town clerk, and he was coming in. I had bought this clock at a yard sale, and uh, somebody said Mary Grace's son picks his clock. So I told myself, okay, next time I see Mary Grace, I'll um, ask her and. It wasn't long before John came in with her, you know, and I, and I thought about it. I think the first time that I met John, I'm not even sure if he talked. He just kind of stood behind Mary Grace and like, you know, just kind of just sized me up. And then and there was something that got mentioned about music. And then he's just, you can't shut him up. He loved Love music. music. Yeah. So that's where Crystal and I, um, years ago, we were single moms. So we um, were roommates, you know. Mm-hmm. So John... Just like with his mouth, he had no filter. He, there's no time. There's no telling what time he's going to knock on the door. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. he's going to come over. But now he would come and um, knock on the door and he would make you a CD. You know, he'd yeah. be like, yeah. I made you this. Yeah. Bye. You know. <laughs> like yeah, the, like you the old school, earlier. like the burned like, oh, yeah. mixtape. Yeah, so well, he, that's, that's throwback right there. Like, right. He, yeah. he did. He had a massive CD collection. <laughs> did he? Yeah, and at the time, it was pretty impressive because, like, our friend Todd uh, had the big red, record collection. So that's where we all got in a little group of friends, you know. Mm-hmm. So John was right there in with us making CDs and – um. But yeah, he he was always into uh I guess what you what would you call he it? He was more into alternative and underground kind of music that okay. we had never heard of before oh, okay. along with the stuff that that we knew, but he introduced us to a lot of new stuff. So he made CDs and made sure that we knew about his type of music. And you better listen to it. And he would always write with a red <laughs> marker, a red Sharpie on the CD like only listen to this, you know, alone <laughs> or, or in a certain mood or whatnot. Yeah. And um, he was right. And so was, I still have those CDs and listen to them. Yeah. That's so, so cool. intriguing. 20 it, years old now. Yeah. Right? It's crazy. The, the, 
the detail and the depiction of this whole story and like here and don't talk about the the clocks and the stuff that he knows yeah. was just my un- first reaction is that he's on the spectrum you know, oh yeah he's he got, he, but he's just never been diagnosed because he's not the kind of guy i guess that would go and get seek help or he right. didn't want it it's right. from what i understand from right. the show but um but i i I wish I would have known them. I like people like that. Oh, yeah. Eccentric and weird. And, you know, I like people like that. It just seems that, um, you know, he was just down in the dumps about it. So he many was. people wish they had known him after listening to that podcast. And they really put everybody down that did know him because they thought, well, he was abandoned. He didn't have any friends. The thing is, is he shut people off, but um, he wasn't as reclusive mm-hmm. as what some people thought. Right. And he did deal with... Um, what people might think of him, homosexuality, depression, Mm -hmm. and, you know, he was a genius, too. So, um, he, I mean, everything was covered. I think the podcast was real good at covering everything that he was dealing with, but um, there's a lot of uh, inside stuff that people would need to know. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Some of it, I mean, it's like, would it, did it make you angry? Did you want to call Brian Reed and be like, what the hell did you put this on here for? You know, like the race is a, the race, racist remarks and things like that. Oh, yeah. That, that was But terrible. it's like, that's just that person. It's not our whole community. It's mm-hmm. not our state. It's mm-hmm. not, um, but the way that it was kind of, portrayed like that, yeah. that was a bigger issue. I mean, you know, maybe it is an issue in John's world, but um, picking those things out, you make it, what it is, you know right. what I mean? You make of it what it is. So. Yeah, I remember hearing some of his rants, like in, yeah. in the little snippets of the rants of John D. Be- uh, John Those are hilarious. To, I mean, yeah. anybody that's listening, you're going, this guy, you know, just off the off the ro- his rocker. But. <laughs> but he tells you what he's thinking, like what's on his yeah. mind. Yeah. And I think that's the, the genuine, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The auth- authenticity right. yeah, of definitely. John. Um so it, he was also into flowers. And, oh, yeah. And uh-huh. um, has a maze that you can see from Google Maps, mm-hmm. I, I was reading. I want to go and see the maze. Oh, yeah. People, Everybody people does. People flocks to it now? Or, it, um, we had a lot of trespassers early on. Yeah. I think the part that bothered me the most was the vandals. You know? I mean, why uh, go over there and tear yeah. something up? You know? it was. But I think there was a novelty because it was that dark gothic part of it that, you know, the, I think it became a magnet for middle school kids and mm-hmm. things that mm-hmm. like that, you know? So that was the thing when... Um, um, yeah, when it first came out. And like you said, of the the initial reaction to everybody was negative. And then it was almost like people um, hadn't finished the podcast. And then once they did, then they were a little bit softer about it. But mm-hmm. we did get a, we did get blame initially, like his friends let him down. There was a lot of things. That, and then um, now that I work with suicide prevention, I have found that what we experienced was the same things that everyone that's lost someone to suicide experiences. We just experienced it publicly. Right. Mm. So the guilt and the blame follows every suicide. Yeah. But we just got social media comments and trolls on us. Yeah, yeah. I was about to ask, that was going to be my next question, was how stressful has your life been or the town of Woodstock's life been mm-hmm. since... I imagine that there's a silver lining to it though, because it has brought publicity to your to your city and your county, and you you want to have. I know y'all are doing a festival, and you want um, your community to grow and mm-hmm. to thrive. And so, is there a silver lining there? Has that happened at all, or has it just been kind of passerbys coming and knocking on the door randomly? Well, I get that. <laughs> um, I think the most beautiful thing that came out of it was the unexpected connections with people mm-hmm. and that we're having this discussion right now right. and that we can talk mental illness and suicide and it's not a stigma. You right. know, I think that um, having being able to have that conversation is very important. And I see people that go, oh, my gosh, I felt like John. And, and the first person that um, – really reached out to me and sent me a card and said, I am a John. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, okay, we've got something going mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Yeah. This is a good way to, this is, this is the silver lining. It is. The yeah. connection uh-huh. and the, the um, awareness. Yeah. So like I said, if y'all ever do a remote, you'll have to come see the cards and things that we've mm-hmm. got. Um, I don't know. I don't know how many countries, states. It's unbelievable. Um, mm-hmm. The amount. And I think very few people know about, our work, you know, it just, you know, I guess if you found out about us, it'd just be a Google search. But um, 
But the few that found us, I mean, is, have really been very important in uh, encouraging us to go forward with prevention. Yeah, definitely. And that's something. Even one person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. We were talking yeah. about that kind of before we roll in a little bit, how the this podcast has taken like a different uh, mind of its own, I guess, mm-hmm. and, and the whole um, awareness aspect of everything with addiction, with depression, depression, and we've even had lack of mental health. I mean, we've had we've had a, a lot of people on where we've actually discussed this. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, do you think that it would have been a different outcome if he had seeked help, if he had actually taken medicine for his illness? And I think he needed therapy. I think he needed an outlet. I think he reached out. That was a big regret for me. Is that he told me he'd written his note. And uh, and I wouldn't read it, you know. And and at the time, I believe that um, we don't discuss this, you know. Yeah. Right. That this is now. I'm the complete opposite. I mm-hmm. believe that this is where you stop when someone says anything, and you say, "Wait, wait, wait, we need to talk," you yeah. know. Yeah, and, and yeah. Because people have that automatic response. They have that mask. I don't think any of us thought that John was to that point, you mm-hmm. know. And we assumed we had time, you know. I think we all thought with Miss Mary Grace, his mom being alive, that this wouldn't be something we'd be dealing with, you know, that, right. that we would all need to act together if something happened to her. Right. And then this came before that. And so then we were all kind of shocked, you know, um, you know, and, and every one of us that we talked, we all were like, when's the last time you talked to John? When's the last time you talked? And we all realized that uh, everybody thought everybody else had talked to him. Right. So, uh, so he was a, he was pretty isolated, and um, some of the people y'all didn't even know he knew. Like the, he right. had friends that y'all never even heard about. Right, right. Uh, and we were like, where did they come from? Mm-hmm. Right. But when you were with him, you felt like you were his only friend. Like oh, you did. Oh, exactly. So crazy. Well, I definitely thought that because I was like, when Brian was interviewing me, I could not grasp a seven part series on John, you know? And I'm like, I'm like on, on John, you know, I was just like, so I was thinking this is going to be very dark. So ironically, I said, look, I won't talk about his death. I won't talk about suicide and, and the manner he died. So I, you know, I'm thinking something really dark and then, here I sit today, and that that's what I do now. I quit my job, and I work volunteer uh, for Alabama Suicide Prevention and Resource Coalition. Awesome. Been doing yeah. that for a year. I um, haven't had any engagements uh, this month, really, but I've got two in January. So, okay. you know, and it's a uh, connection with people. So when you go somewhere, um, if you and I just met and, and you had a friend you lost and I had a friend I lost, it would still be... Um, hard to speak about it, but when you listen to the podcast, you go, "We have John in common, uh-huh. right? Right." So, so we can discuss things, and there's a lot of signs that I missed, and and things. And then also, what's come out of the podcast is we get to laugh a lot about him and remember him in a happy way. Now, like you said, those rants. I mean, you play them to opera music, and you're gonna you're gonna laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cor- corky, yeah, yeah. And that was something I was glad at the. Uh, early on, I wasn't, but at the time, I'm glad they captured that because who? I mean, I've always said this when they've talked about a movie. Who's going to play John? I mean, mm. I, I, my mind, I, I my say thoughts. Woody Harrelson. That's just my. <laughs> that's a good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah just that's, looking at that's, it. So that's I a new. He can do uh, it. I, I, I'm sure he would. He'd be great for it. Um, yeah. The the movie that mm-hmm. you mentioned that before we were rolling mm-hmm. too, and I was like, whoa, what? I cannot wait to see that. Yeah, oh right? yeah, that's what. Um, they came out, I guess it's been a couple of months now, and said it was definite, and they hired a screenwriter, and he is supposed to actually come back. I met him then, and then he's supposed to come back, I think, next month. So okay. um, I really hope uh, what I told them that, you know, and what they explained to me is, okay, if they filmed just the podcast um, that there's spoilers and things that people already know that listen to the podcast. So mm-hmm. um, they felt like the movie would be different from the podcast it would be more in john's mind so i Mm. i personally told him i would like to see him go back in time show john earlier not so suicidal you know and then and then go forward with the prevention and give him a legacy you know yeah so uh yeah because we really had some fun times i mean yeah and my my take on it is you've got a lot of people listening to the podcast, especially people where we're from, and I call them eye rollers oh, because yeah. they just roll their eyes at the thought of S Town uh-huh. and um John and, the and what's going and- on. But <laughs> Cheryl here has taken all the negative stuff and made it the most positive and reached people and really talked about what was going on as far as mental health 
sickness yeah. and and the the most positive you can get out of a podcast. Yeah, She's which done. is definitely what it should be. That's what anybody should take right. out of this. Yeah. Is that you know somebody had lost their life and yeah, um, and all, everything that happened after the the search for the gold and the mm-hmm. why didn't you call and the suspicions and mm-hmm. all this stuff and the cousins. It's like all that kind of drowned it out the fact that some, we lost him lost, yeah, yeah. The, his friends the, these people that loved him just lost him and it's something that i want to you said you know there was a time before when he wasn't so suicidal i want to know about that time oh yeah you know what i mean so tell me like y'all were young i mean this was like how do y'all know each ago, other you're making the cds the, for yeah. each other so I, I, I know you met him through clock making but right. i mean y'all were hanging out what was he like and his personality like very spontaneous <laughs> he would you didn't know what he was going to do next. He would fly in the door in his white T-shirt and jeans, <laughs> his white T-shirt, be this probably the same shirt he had on yesterday. Uh-huh. <laughs> and um, he was just hilarious, funny, um, just... He didn't say hello. He would just... Yeah, he would just come on in. You're just yeah. like, He loved kids. He loved my, my daughter and her son mm-hmm. and played with them and, you know, climbed up on trees with them and stuff like that. But... Um, he just, he was a character. And I feel really bad. My last conversation with him really wasn't a conversation. He had called me, and I left my phone in my seat, and I saw that he was calling me several years ago. And I didn't pick up the phone, mm-hmm. literally, because I thought, well, he's going to keep me on the phone three or four hours, oh, yeah, and yeah. I'm just in, mm-hmm. in a race here. So, And I feel bad because I didn't get a last chance to talk to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what we said. With caller ID, that really hurt John yeah. because you go, oh, I can't talk that long. You know, he'd call you, <laughs> he'd call you at work. He had no shame. We all shame. have those friends. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we all yeah. have them. Well, well that's, that was John. and, and uh, But, like, he would say obscene stuff, too, because, like, you know, uh, one of his friends, like with us, that had a daughter said, you know, he'd go, his daughter be like six, and John would say, "You better hurt, get her on birth control." And you're like, "Oh gosh!" You're like, "Yeah, just, just inappropriate things." But you didn't know whether to laugh or <laughs> was he serious. Yeah, some or... of it you would be like, <laughs> and he, he also what? collected Furbies. I mean, it's a grown man <laughs> collecting Furbies, and you would walk into his room, and there'd be this plethora of CDs, but also lined walls with Furbies. Oh yeah, so yeah, and I've sat in there with them all chirping, and so I'm like, what in the oh, world? No. You know, <laughs> sometimes we I've got friends too that said that you you go, if I'm not back home in an hour, <laughs> check I'll be or yeah. something. You know? it's, it's so crazy to me how somebody can go so have these things that they're just so quirky about, like mm-hmm. the clocks and then the Furbies and then the you know the global warming and the, the yeah and the, the garden flowers. and yeah it's all these different things that it's like he just obsessed about. Hey, and I, I remember in the um, in the podcast it was talking about his you know grades and going to Birmingham Southern and all mm-hmm. that and. And that his um, that like his grades were only good in the ones that he was interested in. It's exactly. Like, uh, yeah. It's like, well, I'm not. But at the same time, you know that he's brilliant mm-hmm. because he's making like the dime. We were talking. Me and my brother were talking about this morning. The, oh, yeah, the, the dime gold, that he made. Gold plated dime. Yeah, that he made it, but he got a C in chemistry, and mm-hmm. it's like, well. How did you know? It's like he only wants to talk about or obsess about the things he wants to. Obsess yeah. About. So I, I imagine that, and then I try to imagine him in a happy like. Have you heard him laugh? You know oh, what I mean? yeah. Like, he was hysterical. Like, he, he would, uh, when he really got tickled, I mean, that's what I loved. Um, there was a, there was a part in the podcast where he just dies laughing, and I was glad they captured that because that's how he was with the um, fingernail polish. When I was um, doing that, uh, yeah. he just thought those fingernail polish names were just hysterical. Yeah. You know, so. Remind me about the fingernail polish. It's been okay. a couple years since I was So, um Back then, I'm the town clerk, and I used to, Woodstock is a is a town that's located in two counties, Tuscaloosa and Bill. Mm-hmm. So when you record something, you have to record in Tuscaloosa County. So back then, I would have to travel with these documents. So I was brave enough, I would say, hey, John, you want to ride with me to Tuscaloosa? <laughs> <laughs> you were in for a good time. So something came up on the ride um, about my fingernail polish. And I was like, uh, I was telling him it was OPI, and I said, it's I'm not really a waitress. And he thought, oh, that is so hilarious. <laughs> so we get down there to the courthouse, and there's this big, heavy set lady. She doesn't want to lift a book up. And, and she said, you know, will you get that baby? And uh, that guy brings her that book, and she said, oh, you so good. My leg's so tired. <laughs> and he thought that's great nail polish name. So 
What the bad That's part hilarious. is, so I am right there in the mix of that, in the in that time frame. I, this is where I'm spending the time with him. I'm over at his house. I was in a breakup at that time. So this was the closest time of mine and John's life. So I'm hanging out over there, you know, staring into space. He's got all the Furbies chirping. He's playing me some music. And, you know, I'm teeny. Is he trying to romance you? I think so. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. He had a thing for you. So, got- so, yeah. So we're sitting there and... What happens in the mix of all this is um, my boyfriend comes back and wants to get back together. And I didn't tell John because, you know, you're like, oh, my gosh, everybody's going to say, don't get back together, you know, Mm -hmm. all this stuff. So we didn't want to hear any of that. So it's like he comes back on Saturday and we get married on Thursday. I mean, it was like that. See how impulsive I am? So, (laughs) So in the meantime, John don't know that. So on Wednesday, he orders me flowers. So on the day I get married, I get flowers that say, you so good, my legs so tired. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. So that's a part that's not in the podcast that you're like, you can't make this up. You can't, you know, and I think they ended up going to my mother-in-law's and I'm just thinking, what? You know, just don't even try to explain that one, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, it, it, but Crystal's there. Crystal was my wedding photographer. <laughs> yeah. Spontaneous <laughs> there. My, my florist. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, I remember thinking, what did the florist think? Right. Yeah. Because they have to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, yeah. i upset with you. Oh, yeah. Hey, but now let me tell you. <laughs> oh, yeah. John, um, you got to realize this is... Uh, a small town, and Jeff, my current husband, we've been married 16 years, but um, before that, I was pretty, my love life was pretty unstable. <laughs> so, <laughs> I too. So, yeah, so me and Krista, we've been through it all, but yeah, uh, John has known me through, what I joke about when I tell people is John knew me through all three husbands, you know, oh. he's my he's my constant, you know, yeah. So, yeah. so I know that he was shaking his head like, what has she done? He didn't and, say anything, mm-mm. really, he could... Just tell, you know, he adored Cheryl. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, they had a special relationship. I think she was his best friend. Yeah. I, yeah. I know at that time, especially. And, and you know, in, a, in just reality, I remember going out there loving the home, thinking, wow, what could I do with this place? Yeah. Uh-huh. Stuff like that. But then also you're like, I've had enough bad ex-boyfriends to think, oh, John would not let me go. <laughs> You'd be stuck. He'd be stuck in that case. Yeah, because yeah, I will tell you. <laughs> I will tell you, I loved him. I did love him. But, you know, but it's also true that I'm thinking, like the day he sued me, you know, we went to court and then he was hanging his head like, you know. Like for real? Yes, he oh sued my me. Gosh. Um, and uh, we had a business together and he sued me. You know, he. I mean, he did things like, you just, you just, there's only one John. I mean, you know, yeah. he'd do things like where I thought I was going to get fired and then he would say, I'm sorry. But now people at town knew him too. So when mm-hmm. he did those things, he might would have gotten me fired if it had been anybody else. Right. But you know, when he did some of that stuff. So, but yeah, the day we went to court, I had wrote a letter and stuck it in my son's Bible. Like you've been a good son. I'm like, gosh, what if I get there? John wants to kill me. Oh, <laughs> you know, but, but now when I got down there, John was so broken hearted, so yeah. pitiful, but you know, I, you know, I loved him, but I was also scared of him. He a little was bit. impulsive too. Right. Yeah. You know? In a, in a way, you know, you just had to figure out. Yeah. You Which didn't know what he was going to do. Yeah. That kind of got worse over time. Oh I yeah. Imagine. Yeah. And then, then you you couldn't predict him, you know. So, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm thinking he's going to. When somebody sues you, you're thinking they're mad and they're at court and they're angry. And then he's down there and he's like, "I just want you to talk to me." And I'm like, <laughs> like, John. So when they we, they dismissed it, and uh, I wrote him some uh, checks. You know, I, I think I settled out of court with him for a thousand dollars. I wrote him ten payments, a hundred dollars. And me and Jeff said that if I would take him the money, he wouldn't have accepted it. But I just wrote him a check. But you know. After he sued me, we still got pretty close again because uh, my brother and him were close, you know. Mm-hmm. So my brother ended up dying in an accident, and um, I called John, and uh, John's like, you don't even have to say it, I know, mm. you know. So that was where we got back uh, being friends and talking. If I saw him in the store, you know. Uh, but now he would be at the store, and he would say, um, Come out of the house, you know, see the puppies, which I'm the reason he was the Humane Society. Those were my dogs, you know. Uh, okay. so, yeah. but that's a sweet story, but my uh, dog got hit by a car, mm-hmm. and uh, John took 
10 puppies home with him, you know. Oh, my god! And the veterinarian said they'll never make it. And he set his alarm. He fed them every two hours. Had a huge dog house built for them. Really? Yeah, really? yeah the doggy built. mansion my brother was built. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, he, he was, yeah, very, very tender-hearted, mm-hmm. you know. Animal lover. Like, like I said, when Johnny died, he was pitiful, you know. Yeah. And, I wondered how he would react to, to death. Oh, he was with, pitiful. With, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. It's crazy to think, like, he, he, you know the aftermath, and this is what baffles me about suicide in general. I have friends that have done it, and um, and it's like, but you know what the aftermath is. You know how mm-hmm. much, how hard. But you can't see that because your pain is so yeah, unbearable. you're so in it, yeah. Um, one of the guys that I speak with has a good description, and he says when your mind becomes suicidal, uh this, the regular mind has all these other things like I know this is going to hurt my family and that's all this stuff and but you start getting tunnel vision and what suicide is is an escape and, mm-hmm. and, and when you're in pain you're going to find some way to escape and it might be sleeping all day it might be drug addiction mm-hmm. but suicide is an option to end this pain you know you don't see over here what everybody else is going to be feeling. You're thinking, you know what? She'll be better off if I'm gone. She don't care mm-hmm. about me because I tried to call her and she didn't answer the phone. Right, you know, right, you yeah. start thinking, you start making judgments about people and they don't know what you're thinking because most suicidal people have this mask on and, and we all have that. We all have that automatic response. Like, how are you doing? Yeah. You're going to say I'm fine. Right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but you're I, not fine. Yeah, I think about that all the time whenever I, I was on some depression medication um last year golly i don't know. but it was the therapist said if you start to have suicidal thoughts just give us a call and i was thinking walking out of there i was like but why would i do that if i'm already having those thoughts you why, know, like, why? that doesn't make sense really. well that's true and if then you're so in it yeah and i guess it's if they increase you know right, yeah. and, and that's what people when they have the ads on tv and it gets medication gets a negative thought you know they'll, mm-hmm. but but people aren't thinking. They were already having these thoughts, right, you know. So, right. so you you've got to play with it. So I always tell people if you know your first medication doesn't try, it may be a different dosage. You know, mm-hmm. keep with your therapist. And and that was a thing that I learned after my second divorce because I was like, I am such a failure. You know, I'm mm-hmm. 31 years old. I'm divorced twice. What is wrong with me? So I went to a therapist, and um, that's what that's what we talked about. Is you know you know. I had this pressure about what was expected of me with my son and my life, small town. You mm-hmm. know, it's embarrassing, you know, to to change your name and, you know, everybody to know what's going on. When I got divorced the second time, uh, one of my friends found out at a beauty shop because I didn't tell her. <laughs> You're just like tired of saying. I'm That's guessing. how it yeah. is down here, too. And then the, the stigma behind mm-hmm. you, there's things you don't talk about. You don't mm-hmm. talk about money or religion mm-hmm. or politics or, or suicide mm-hmm. or things, you know, those kind of things. So... You know, to break that is uh, is I think <laughs> going to be the silver. Uh, even lining talking about going it. to therapy, like mm-hmm. it, yeah. it, it used to be like, oh gosh, oh, they're yeah. in therapy, they're messed up. Yeah. yeah, but now we talk about it openly. At least I do on our uh, YouTube channels and stuff about going to marriage ther- counseling. And yeah, I think uh, a lot of the I mean, pressure that people feel work. is is pressure that you put on yourself. Yeah, you know, right. That exactly. you. That's I think right. That's with John, with even with you afterward. I think that that pressure and that idea in your head. Of course, your society formed that mm-hmm. and the way you're brought up. And I think that those all play a factor. But really, at the end of the day, I think it's what you, it's the pressure you create for yourself. It is. Well, and I think John is one of those guys that like, I just, I don't think he would have ever even thought about going to get help. One of our friends said, um, he became concerned about John because uh, John had this large, like, Rubbermaid tub where he had documented a clock restoration, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he said he gave it to him, and he says, mm, that's that's something he really valued, you know. So that is mm-hmm. that is something that you watch for someone, all of a sudden, prize possessions, they start mm-hmm. saying, I, need, I want you to have this, and I want you to have uh, And yeah, so when yeah. he did that, he said he left there, and he called 911, and they said, um get him to a hospital, and he said, if I do that, John will never speak to me again. Yeah. He says, the bad thing is, though, John never spoke to him again. Mm. So, you know, yeah. he's yeah. a year later, and John did it, you know. He's gambling. I mean, we have family members, and we in general all have family members and friends that they're, it's just like, God, if you just would go to a one counseling session oh, yes. or one therapist and just see what talking to somebody outside of your friend group or family group or 
yeah. somebody that's not partial to anybody, then it'll open up <clears throat> so much more in I, your head. It sure I, feel does. Like, I feel like with John, he had a bunch of people I feel like he felt like calling, but he, because of his personality and the way that he was, he, it was like, mm-hmm. you see his name and you're like, I don't have time right now, you mm-hmm. know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I just wonder, like, if that was his way of reaching out when he was calling everybody before. And, you know, if, if any of those people had answered the phone, mm-hmm. and not that it's their fault at all mm-hmm. for not answering or anything yeah. like that, but if one, I can't help but think if one of those persons w- would have been able to talk him off the cliff. Oh, you know yeah, I mean? and I think when we look back, Boozer and I have talked about that. There were times that we did. You know, Boozer mm-hmm. and I have went out there when we've got a call that, hey, John is threatening. And, you know, I think um, Boozer reminded me of a time that, we went out there, and we'd heard he got a gun, and I think his dad had just died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I, you know. And who's Boozer? Um, he's the town attorney. The okay. attorney, remember? No, yeah. I'm not, for anybody listening, I was just. Yeah, oh, he's right. our, yeah. yeah, he's our town attorney, but he's also a personal friend, you know. Okay. When you're a small town attorney, he's our, he is our local therapist. Yeah. If you want to <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> he, he hears all our business, you know, so. But, uh, but yeah, Boozer was a, a good friend of John's and, and mine. So, you know, you're thinking, uh, there's John, there's the town attorney, there's me. And so, yeah, we, we go out there and, 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 you know, so there was a lot of things that I think about now. John was uh, five years older than me, so he was a little bit ahead of things um, as far as experiencing them. And then what you got to realize is the podcast come out two years ago, but John's been gone four years. He right. died in 2015. Oh, okay. So okay, for yeah. I'm now experiencing things that he was back then, and I'm like, I understand him better now than I ever did before. Mm-hmm. Don't you think? I mean, yeah. when we did life stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean things that. And then the bad thing is now we're some of us are are coming out of the workforce and have time for him, but we don't have him. Right. Mm-hmm. It's too late now. Mm-hmm. So uh, how do y'all know each other? What was y'all's story? Roommates? No, that... Well, we grew up together. Mm-hmm. Grew up together. Small town. And um, just kind of best friends growing up. Um, and just remained that way. Yeah. Rode the school bus yeah. together. Yeah. I mean, we, we've been we've been through it all. Like I said, marriage, divorce, married again. Yes. You know, a we've lot been of things in common. And... <laughs> yes. <laughs> Many <laughs> times. Yeah. 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 We went through a lot of struggles together. We did. And, and we still do. We're still there yeah. for each other, mm-hmm. even at this part in our life. Yeah. But, uh, well, yeah. When S-Town came out, Crystal got a call from me every day about 6 in the morning. You know, I couldn't sleep at night, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Crystal, what are we going to do? You know, because people online say some horrible They were passion yeah. and yeah. just doing yeah. Tagging like us that, in obituaries so. of suicides and things like that. I'm mm. like, oh, this is horrible. But yeah. um, Crystal, uh, Crystal is a big reason that... Um, when I went over to John's workshop, I found some business cards, and I got one for y'all. Oh, cool. So um, I talked to Crystal, and I would just play this back and forth because you could you see everybody that was so angry at us, but then you'd see somebody that was so broken and hurt, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, there's a part of you that's like, I'm coming off of Facebook and Instagram, and I wasn't even on Twitter uh, until they tagged me on National Nail Polish Day, and I'm like, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to tweet now. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, so... There was a part of me that wanted to hide, and then but then there were some people that just like I said, just really, really needed us. So that's where Crystal would be who I would sound things off of. So when we ran out of business cards, um, one of our famous stories is I said, Crystal, do you think I should reprint them? And she said, You know, those that are criticizing you are going to do it anyways, you know. Mm-hmm. So when I speak at um, suicide prevention events, I give them a business card. It's just a connection to John. You mm-hmm. know, it's a duplicate of his. But but um, people just kind of see that he was real. And yeah. um, so when I went to pick up my order, there was this young man that had not waited on me, but he was at the counter. Like He was like he was watching for me. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, did you know him? And I said, oh, my gosh, I'm busted. You know, uh, you know he's going to turn me in. You know, he knows. John. And anyways, but he said, "My," I said, I'm trying to help people like him. And he says, my sister, Katie, has went to school to help people like him. Can I give her your number? So oh. I was like, absolutely. Well, Katie is the grant coordinator for Alabama Suicide Prevention. Wow. So wow. this all just came about. This is not, you know, people will go, wow, y'all really turned that around. This was not an elaborate plan. Mm-hmm. You know, right. this I'm nobody's that smart, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah. it's a, been a beautiful journey that we didn't intend to take, you know. But, but yeah, we, so, yeah, we, we've held the Wildflower Walk. We've held the Woodstock Music Festival, you know, a couple times a year. We have our community events, but we do have some 
visitors that come. A lot of people, I don't know what you would call it, almost like a pilgrimage. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody that really connects to John. I had some people came on the anniversary of a loved one's death, so they came to the library. and But that's what, at my house, I've got cards and stuff just tacked up. It's just my laundry room, but it's just where when I, you know, you want to say, Oh, let me shut the drawer. Let me put a lid on this box, and we'll just forget that S Town was part of my life a few years ago. But you can't, you know, yeah. You, yeah. it's you're it's you're forever changed. I don't think that, especially with people still uh, opening up to it, listening mm-hmm. to it. Mm-hmm. But um, like, we don't know how many people have come out to Woodstock or just visited John's grave. Mm-hmm. Just say, for instance, they leave him tokens and money and records and yeah. little bottles of uh, wild turkey on his grave <laughs> and things like that. And um, he's just impacted so many people. Yeah, with uh, you know, Is, same do you situations. Think that, that, was, that was his plan. I like I always because he's just so smart, and I always thought like, did he really want that him to investigate the murder, the murder or was this he wanted him around and to be get to to build out the Another publicity way to reach for out. when he did this? Like he had planned it, and I, so it would go. I've thought about that, but I think in some ways he almost panicked because it was a. Fake, don't you think? Yeah, and he reached out so far, I mean, to a producer in New York Mm -hmm. and was telling him about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, why not somebody local or anything Mm -hmm. like that? I don't know if he just, you know, wanted some attention or a friendship or something like that. But I I don't um, think he could have seen this because my son thinks that if he had seen this, he wouldn't have done it. You know, you know, uh, really? you know, you know that he did. In retrospect, yeah, mm-hmm. he, he wouldn't want all the. Because hey, I, I can't um, believe the people that relate to him, and I, but I think that we all have those thoughts like he had. He just could voice them, you know. Well, yeah. When my thoughts are spinning, they're ninety miles an hour, but I can't get them out my mouth that right, fast, right? Right. You know. Yeah, I mean, it blows my mind that he would talk about it so openly. Yeah, whereas most it, people don't. Well, um, a doctor that um, one of my friends that I've met. Um, uh, her husband's a doctor, and he said John was so far in this because he was saying for me not to feel so guilty because John was so far. This was a very detailed plan that he wasn't going to let go of easily, you right. know. So, and that's the thing. So, what we talk about and what we want to do with Ace Park is intervene early, you know, not not get because that's what you need to know. You need to know if they if they're stockpiling pills, if they've recently acquired a handgun, if they've taken um, action in their plan. You know, some right. people will have a suicidal thought. You know, oh, you know, I just can't go on. I wish I could sleep and never wake up. Mm-hmm, you know, right. but actually starting to carry it out, writing the note, right. things like that. Where they are, are, are it's it's going to be hard to let that go to them because it's as odd as it sounds, but it's a relief to them because and think about it if you're in so much pain, you think, well, when I can no longer bear it, this is what I'm going to do, you know. Right. So he wasn't going to let go of that easy. What was the note that he left? Um, uh, it, they read part of it at the very end of the uh, podcast. I was, I was about to say, I remember seeing something, and then, um, but yeah, I mean, on, didn't he have several Instagram drafts? Numbers. Um, I Over haven't the years seen that you've them. Known him, I mean, has there been several times where he said, "Well, I've got to know," or is well, this just the, the last? I think this was it because when the podcast started, uh, play a uh, re- reading it, I got really upset because there's language in it, and mm. and that was um that was the hardest part for me. When you listen to the podcast, everybody else, John's a character. He was my friend, you know. Mm-hmm. So when I heard his voice again, I was devastated, and uh. And to hear that language, I couldn't listen to chapter seven. Even I, I was in it, but at the same time, there was that curiosity. But there was that other part of um, I was like, I can't finish it. You know, mm-hmm. I can't. And uh, one of my friends said, "You've got to. You know, there's a part you need to hear." And then when I listened to it, part of it was devastating, but part of it was healing because I was like, oh, "There is my John." You know, because mm-hmm. uh, the language where he walks through. The, um, the funny part where he says that he was thrashing and flailing from ye- yellow jackets, mm-hmm. you know, that's John. Uh, but, you know, he reacquainted with the stars like old friends and the language of the the fauna in the forest. Yeah, he's a beautiful writer, and, too, uh, even and though. That, and, and that's the way brilliant. he spoke to me. So that's yeah. what people go, why are you out there? You know, we... I told Crystal, too, that we get these people that go, oh, you're enjoying the fame mm-hmm. of this. And I'm like, think about what you just said. 
take any of your friends and try to meet the world through the loss of them. Yeah, you know no, that is no. not anything that we ever, you know. But but the Ask thing, the but Lord. but yeah. if you're going to be put out here, let's do something with it. Let's give him a legacy. Mm-hmm. And that language in that final letter, that John is not the John that sued me. That's the John that's my friend. That's the John that planted flowers with me, mm-hmm. and that's the John that I work for every day to save. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, and the the legacy and the way that you're still, I mean, you're, you would in a million years would have never guessed the number of downloads oh, that no. this has, the, what you're able to, the voice that you have now. The people that relate to That you're reaching out to. That are yeah. able to, that he might have stopped one person. Oh, yeah. I think you know? so. Yeah, I think there's totally. several people that said I was where he was. I, I had a guy this weekend, you know, I don't tell anyone. Everybody has their own story, but I had a guy thank me this weekend, and I was like, for what? Mm -hmm. You know, and he was like, for what you do with suicide prevention, you saved my life. And I was like, you know, and, you know, as much as I talk about it, I still am shocked when people talk it back to me. You know, I'm trying to get better at that, but uh, it is, it is amazing to think about um, reaching someone and reaching someone that says, you know what? I can hang on, you know, yeah. and, that, and that's that, and that's what that's what it's all because about. Because if you reach someone, they're going to reach somebody else. Right. And that's yeah, yeah so like you said, with your with every time you talk about therapy, and it becomes normal language, mm-hmm. you know. And, and and like today, meeting y'all, every time we make a connection, that ripple effects. You know, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? Um, maybe I maybe I could go talk to somebody about how I'm feeling, and. Then, and like you said, it's a relief. Yeah, you know, right. it's like somebody goes, "Wow, I'm not crazy." It's nothing mm-hmm. to be ashamed about. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, no, it's so, not, yeah, it's nothing to be ashamed about because there's, so, I mean, there's so many people going through it. And like I had said in the beginning, I think that mental health issues and and all the m- people that have mental mm-hmm. health, health issues that aren't getting help for it, I mean, those are the people that you really want to try to reach. And mm-hmm. um, and there's probably tons that you don't even know that you've. Reach, well, that's know? why, like today, that's why I was asking y'all how y'all find out about me because I feel like I have a very limited, but every, you know, but every time you, and that's what I would like to um, expand, you know, you would like for somebody when they search S Town for them to find suicide prevention, you know, right. so that'd be the first up. thing that pulls mm-hmm. up instead yeah. of uh, being shit town, it could right. be suicide prevention town, exactly. Right. It could stand for the S could stand for something else, yeah. And I've always said too, <laughs> we could put a U in front of that because it's us, go. everybody. Yeah. Everybody has lived in S Town mentally at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think is uh, I guess it's his headstone. Uh, the it's got the sundial. It's all, mm-hmm. all over the internet, but mm-hmm. it's life is tedious and brief. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 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 deep. That's mm-hmm. super deep. Yeah, life yes. is tedious and brief. Everybody that's, loves that's that. I'm glad Rita put that on yeah. there. I think I've seen tattoos. Tattoos of it. Oh, wow. it's all over. Yeah, and that's a funny thing. Like, I got tagged in a flower somebody sent to somebody that said, you so good, my life's so tired. <laughs> I'm like, wow, John would have loved that, you know. What else? So we, we, we get we get some funny stuff. Like, I wonder if that nail polish is out there now. Yeah. You know, it's got to be. You know, yeah. I've asked OPI. You know, I even wanted them. Okay, I had a, a beautician that I met because of this explain to me that the uh, – the collections are based on cities. So, uh. and, and, and I'm not really a waitress is the Hollywood collection. Think about it. I'm not really a waitress. You uh-huh. know, I'm a starving artist. So, um, I asked them, I wrote them a letter and asked them because of the movie and the downloads to release an S town collection, hey. you know, cause oh, wouldn't be it be awesome. fun, you know, <laughs> exactly. um, because, uh, and I said proceeds to benefit suicide. That prevention. Would be yeah. So, you know, maybe with this movie coming out, they've never answered me, but I still write. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you I know, do. That's right, but you know, but we've been laughing because we were said, you so good, my legs so tired, it's got to be a nude shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. We hope, like, if the movie comes out, we just hope it's done in good taste. Mm-hmm. And, oh, yeah. And just yeah. takes off positive from all the negative that, you know, um, that was happening in S-Town and, you know, people got mad with or wondered with that everybody just gets it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right, because that's what I said. S Town is not the geographical coordinates of Woodstock, Alabama. It's right. just a mental state of mind mm-hmm. that John was in. But yeah, the, with the movie, uh, I told them that I would help them all I could if they wouldn't destroy people's lives. Because that, like I said, most people don't realize we're real people. You yeah. know, you know, some people thought we weren't. You know, they're like, this can't be real. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, who do you think? I mean, there's you still know everybody in town. Everybody's mm-hmm. still there. I mean, did. 
did anybody's life change drastically? Did they find themselves in a depression after this? or did I think any- so. I think the youngest people were impacted the hardest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cabram and Tyler, I would have to say, as devastating as it was to me at 45, I can't imagine being 25. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've seen several interviews with Tyler, I think. Mm-hmm. And what's the relation there, Cabram and Tyler? Uh, Cabram was the one that was supposed to be the murderer. Okay. And then right. and then Tyler was the friend of John's mm-hmm. uh, that, you know, Jack, had the close relationship with that him. Was, right. uh, like that was that told John yeah. about the murder. Him okay. and Jake, his brother. And they're both great guys mm-hmm. and um, And they're they're kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing I had <laughs> that's what me and Crystal talk about. There's nothing we're so glad uh our our escapades at twenty five are not um, out there. No, I mean. right. no, no social media back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's a good segue for this. We, we would have our own babies. <laughs> don't trust give me. us some don't tell mom stories. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do y'all have? Anything fun? <laughs> <laughs> well, Caught them off guard. Oh, yeah. best, we, we gotta know your best one, each of you. Okay. And they sure, can both be first. together. From Woodstock, Alabama, uh, what yeah. happened? <laughs> I, the, my, I, the, the favorite one that everybody wants to know about John is the voodoo doll. So let me tell you this one. Okay. Uh-huh. It's the best, really. It's, <laughs> if you don't know John, uh, this will bring you closer to him. Because <laughs> this is just a crazy, sick, funny thing uh-huh. he did. Okay. Yeah, like yeah my husband's always like, don't tell it, don't tell it. <laughs> you got to tell it. So he's not here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, here... I'm at the town hall, and I think um, I've caught this lady in a crime, you know. So I mess up, and I tell John, and I said, when John Wait, was, you caught a lady in a crime? Yeah, okay. so, uh, you know, I did bookkeeping. Okay. So, oh, um, okay. So um, I was telling John, I was like, ooh, when she gets caught, buddy, she is screwed. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of money. Yeah, I was like, ooh, John. And, a local a local person yeah. in town mm-hmm. at that time that was working at a business. Thing. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, you know. Um, John goes, ooh, it sounds like it's time for a voodoo doll. <laughs> I was like, yeah. You know, I wasn't th- thinking that he really was going to go home. Mm-hmm. So the next day I'm at work and the chief of police comes by and he's gritting his teeth. He's mad. And he says, I got to go make a report on a voodoo doll. <laughs> and I said, oh, oh no. my God. I get on the phone. I call John on the phone. <laughs> and and uh, I dial his number and he don't even say hello. He goes, <laughs> and I'm like, John, I'm like, John, you're going to get me fired. You can't do that. So here comes the chief of police, and this lady's a tall blonde, and here comes a naked Barbie in with a big screw in her butt. Oh, my God. And I was like, <laughs> so, yeah, when the podcast came out, I was like, Is So it, John took this so doll, yeah. made a doo-doo doll. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Out of a Barbie. It, took out of a Barbie mm-hmm. and took it to where this lady that was – Committing the crime yeah. worked. Yeah, okay. scared her to death. And um, maybe hung it down at her window oh, desk. Oh my gosh! And she found it that morning with the screw in the butt. And that yes, was, that was <laughs> then over Barbie. Her. Yeah. And so, so she, then um, she called the police, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. oh, she said, "I know this oh. Macklemore boy did it." And I'm like, "Well, we don't know." Mm-hmm. You know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Don't tell oh, mom. That yeah, definitely. Crazy. I was like, I was like. That's like I said. That's those calls where I was like, "John, you're going to get me fired." You know, John didn't have to answer to a boss. So yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, I just yeah. thought it was funny, and we were just kind of scared. So yeah, you don't ever know. So what I was like, I can't do. tell that story, and then. When the podcast came out, we found out about a couple of more voodoo dolls. So we're like, okay, yeah. okay. So it wasn't his well, first time. Yeah. <laughs> we were the only ones that got it. He just pushes the envelope. That's just hilarious. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, just you're just like, like suing you and everything. Oh, it's it was crazy. just, you just, people just didn't understand. Um, Tyler said something that was uh, relatable to me that said that it was exhausting being his friend. And mm-hmm. it was, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. you know, yeah. I agree. You, by the time you're over there, you know, he wanted you, you know, Several hours span, and you're tired. I mean, first of all, you can't process all that. You know? Yeah, you're just mentally exhausted. Yeah, it sounds like his mind just goes a million miles an hour. It did. It, it did. He did exhaust you, and that you know, like I say, I hated that I didn't answer the phone the last time mm-hmm. he called me, yeah. just because I thought well, I don't have time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, you know. We've all got friends like that. Yeah, you, yeah. You see how they pawn that question off on John's story, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, thought, I thought you wanted. I thought yeah. you wanted a John story. <laughs> all right, give us your stories. I know y'all got into something. What's your uh, best don't tell mom? And if she has it, <laughs> if she already knows, that's okay. What, what's something you got in trouble for real bad? Oh, man. Uh, well, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> there was this one time in Panama City. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's where everybody's no, story we're goes. Take that from, they? I think we signed right. a treaty on that. Yeah, we're not allowed in Florida. <laughs> Stay alive since 1992. <laughs> um, we, me and Cheryl just were pranksters growing up and got into some trouble some time. But um, we would, oh, let's just say, Instead of, you know, asking our parents for an allowance, grabbing up some money, mm-hmm. raking up five bucks and going to see the local bootlegger <laughs> or something like that at like 14 years old, you know. we I mean, we did that. We were we were silly, but we yeah. grew up, you know, like in a, I would just say a small redneck town yeah. kind of. You get uh, bored. That, oh, was, yeah. that was our, our type of fun. Yeah. So um, we would do stuff like that. You know, and our parents didn't know, and we wouldn't want them to. But then we get older and tell them about it, and they just cannot believe <laughs> that we would ever do anything bad. But our daddy did say when he thought we would go off and start a cult. Yeah, <laughs> my dad's always been scared of me and Cheryl together. So. It is hilarious. always up to something. Huh? That's right. That's the kind of stuff you got to do down here, though. People just like they balk at me and come. We say, "Oh, we stole the car," and oh, and, we did. And went joyride. It's like you stole the car at thirteen. You know, like what were you thinking? It's like we've got many. Else to do. Uh, Many you know? Panama City stories too. Yeah, I am. yeah. Panama City. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the place. <laughs> That's the place <laughs> That's to go. I, 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 I only have the stories because I was so well behaved. No, she was. <laughs> I just want to say Cheryl's a tad older than me, <laughs> and whatever she Bad did, influence. I followed. Yeah, it's yeah. all her fault. Yeah, I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told my husband. I said, please don't run for public office. What are you thinking? Yeah. You're not, you're not, you don't know what they're going to bring up on me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh. That oh, is hilarious. Well, thank you all so yeah. much for coming Wait, on today. No, hang we on. Got, still got hang story? On. I got one more question. Uh, what's where's, your question? where's the money? Oh, I think it was spent. I mean, yeah, I don't think there is any. Listen, I heard personal. my husband's oh. my husband's friend at work says he's got an aunt that's mm-hmm. got a cousin or something that lives out there. Oh, everybody and does. Everybody, everybody knows everybody. Out <laughs> here, Everybody's you know? And then right around the time after a couple, a little while after it happened, she started showing up in all the fanciest things, and she had jewelry on it. Um, I hadn't heard that one, but so I've heard I I've heard anybody that's living large. <laughs> larger than they I hadn't heard that, but I've heard I've heard everybody that saw it before his death. Mm-hmm. I've had nobody admit it that's seen it since his death. You know, I, I do think that some existed, but I do know some things like he had credit card debt, and that was very unusual. Yeah. So uh, for John to charge something, I'm thinking he was limited resources. Mm-hmm. Okay, because talked- John was that pay as you go. Maybe he tapped out. Maybe that contributed to you know some of his depression and mm-hmm. and he had, he had voiced that concern yeah. to me mm-hmm. about uh but yeah as far as the gold I've said the gold is us See, every time we uh, yeah. you know, we've yeah. met somebody there's a treasure right there and his mom's still alive so yeah, right. Mary true. Grace is in good hands and uh, is she in good mm-hmm. hands and the cousins are taking care of they her? they take really mm-hmm. good care of her she's okay. gained weight she's healthy. Um, she's got great nurses. She's got a great caregiver. If I could have personally picked a caregiver for her, uh-huh. she's exactly where she should be. You know, okay. so, that's good. So, um, that's good to know. It's a person that um, that I've known. and Because and you think they probably got some hate mail. Oh, yeah. No, actually, Mary Grace doesn't. They protected her. Mary Grace doesn't know about no, the podcast. No, not her. I'm talking about the cousins. That- oh, now, they got a lot. But, you know, the funny thing about it is, is if you like John... Why were you shocked at Rita? Because that's exactly how Rita and Mary Grace talk. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. that that blunt, because what was it Mary Grace said the other day? They said they took her to the mountains, and they said, uh, Rita, the cousin, you know, said, uh, Mary Grace, we saw a bear. And she said, well, of course you did. This is where they live. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so, Duh. Yeah, so that's how they talked, you know. So mm-hmm. when she got all that slack about the Cut his nipples off. He's dead. You know, but she was she was like me. You know, he, she didn't say that. She's thinking it. She's right. just she's telling Brian yeah. that like it wouldn't have hurt John because you know like she said everything that was monetary value was was his mother's. But now I think they were just metal. But at mm-hmm. the time, you know, everybody's gold, gold, gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and people don't realize how primitive they lived. All right, no oh, central no. heat and air. Yeah, no TV because mm-hmm. John shot the TV. <laughs> oh, well, you know, he got mad at something that was on the news or something one time and shot it and never got on TV after. <laughs> that's, so, that's crazy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they lived like, I don't know, if you've ever been to your great-grandparents' house, you know, they, uh-huh. they, it, it, you walked in back in time, didn't you? Yeah. It is, and it's very historical, old. Um, I would just say 
if you took the Munster's house, uh-huh. if you okay. remember that show, yeah, and yeah. just kind of downplayed a little bit of it. It was kind of old and distressed Creepy. like that, yeah. but but nice, but, you know, yeah. a nice historical place. You know those, your grandparents, it just smells like grandparents. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. mothballs. Kind of, <laughs> I love it. Well, I'm glad that she's being taken care of and, mm-hmm. um, and that the whole town hasn't been dug up and, uh, <laughs> by everybody mm-hmm. looking. I don't want to visit now. Like, I want you to come. I want you to come, gonna, I want you to come see. We're gonna come eat banana pudding. That's what yeah, you need to do. Is it banana pudding? Is it that, is. That's yeah. the one. Yes. Yeah, actually, Joe Mammy that pudding. makes the banana pudding is watching my granddaughter mm-hmm. for me to be here right now. So yeah, uh, you should come. You should come yeah. see the cards, the letters, the wildflower seeds. It's it was pretty healing because we got some scorn, but we also got some love from everywhere. You yeah. know. So we were like, wow, you know, you get um get a letter from a, a care package from Australia and from England, and it's like, you know, I met your town let me show you mine yeah it it was unbelievable lots of friends yeah well uh, and the awareness, I was going to say, the awareness is the main is, thing. Is the main that thing. Came out of it. Where can they? Where can they go to look up all this? Acepark dot org. Acepark. A s p a r c dot org. Okay. Mm-hmm. Acepark awesome. org. Yeah. That's, and that's your organization. So if anybody yeah. is out there and you're struggling and you need some help or Speak a, up. an ear to listen and uh, some help, yeah, go don't check be it out. We're going to leave. Help. We're going to leave their information down in the description, and um, so sure. y'all have you know a way to get in touch and. Thank you guys so if much. If you for haven't time. heard S Town yet, go. What do you wait? For? Go listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my definitely. gosh, unbelievable. Well, thank y'all so much for coming and telling us your stories and for, um, you know, just remembering John and yes, and being to here. Us. This thank is you. Crazy. Thank you for letting us. Yes, thank you so much. Thank everybody for listening. Definitely tune in next week. We're gonna have another good show for you. And uh, look at look down in the description for all the information. Yeah. All right, thanks, y'all. We'll see you Don't on the next. Don't tell mom. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. That was fun. fun.